Hey, today we're gonna to talk about travel as therapy. Yep, <laughs> stay tuned. Good morning. If you're new here, hello, my name is Laura. Welcome to my channel. Now I'm sitting here in my hotel room in Jamaica, and yes, it's kind of messy. I have not made my bed. And back there you see a chair full of clothes because the closet didn't have any hangers, so I couldn't hang anything up. And I did have the chair outside of the frame, but it started raining, and my hotel room is all, has this huge, beautiful view with a huge open window, and my clothes were going to either blow away or get wet. So I moved them over there, and then I decided to do the video. So hey, this is real life. I'm not curating a set here. This is me, I'm living. And I'm also eating some food. I brought this food with me. These are noodles from Trader Joe's. They cost about three or four dollars. And I just heated it up and now I'm eating it. So that's a, a way to save money when you're traveling. But today's topic, travel as therapy, is for me the best way to heal myself is to travel. Now, nothing against therapy. I know it's probably helped thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions of people. Not probably, it has. But it hasn't helped me. <laughs> For me, it's just an, an expensive conversation with a girlfriend. My friends give good advice and they give it to me for free. <laughs> so to get it for $150 an hour, and sometimes it's not even good, I'm just not sure if that's a good use of money. Particularly since you're supposed to have it every week, right? So, what is that, $600 a month at $150 an hour? And that's if you can get it for $150 an hour. You might be able to get it for less, <clears throat> or it might cost more. But if it's not working, it's not worth it. And I've had some crazy... Well, the therapists maybe aren't crazy. I know crazy is not a good word to use nowadays, but I've gotten some very strange advice. <laughs> one guy, and he was one of the better ones, actually, but he told me, I kid you not, oh gosh, the branch just broke outside. He told me to hire a gigolo. I am not kidding. That was his solution for my stress. Mm-hmm. A random man. He's gonna bring me joy. I'm not kidding. I've had other therapists give me terrible advice. One woman, I was telling her I was having some challenges with one particular area, and she said, she Googled, um, information about grief, which I think was from like Elizabeth Kubler-Ross or another grief expert. She found this on Google and sent me the article. And I told her, I'm not grieving, this doesn't pertain to me. And she said, take from it what you will, It'll, you'll figure it out. <laughs> I'm like, what? Horrible and expensive advice. So, I'm going to talk to you instead about what I do for therapy. One of the things for me that works well is traveling. And the reason why traveling works so well is because you have to be present. It takes a lot of thought to figure out where is the grocery store? How do I convert this money? How do I prepare this food when I can't turn on the oven? Which restaurant am I going to go to? How do I take the bus? Etc. Etc. How do I communicate in this foreign language? There's so much thought that goes into every day when you're traveling that you remain present. And a lot of the reasons why people are so sad and depressed, and I'm no expert, but they're caught in this 
negative loop of things that they've done or experiences that they've had and you know to no fault of their own or no fault of my own that's what happens right but when you're traveling you don't really have time to do that you're really experiencing life at that moment and you're not thinking about the past right so when you're traveling for me at least you're not depressed you might have some anxiety and there may be nights when you feel lonely if you're traveling by yourself so I'm not saying it's a cure-all and it certainly doesn't last once you return home necessarily but it's great if you're gone for a week you have a full week without feeling any sadness or the majority of it and the thing is when you return home and you start getting back into that negative thought pattern what you do is you plan the next trip <laughs> I'm not kidding even if that next trip is not for another month or two months the daily practice of thinking about flights and thinking about hotels it gets you in that other space and you feel so much better so either you're doing well when you're traveling or you're doing well when you're thinking about traveling <laughs> both of them are great and even though I'm in Jamaica right now when I finish this food I am gonna get on my computer and look at flights for my next trip and you may be thinking to yourself that is way more expensive than therapy but let's let's talk about this for a minute if your therapy is $150 an hour and you go four days a week I mean four days a month that's $600 a month right if you do a trip every other month you now have $1,200 right so one cost-effective thing you can do is stay in a hostel you can get a hostel for like eight to fifteen dollars a night they can be more but your inexpensive hostel is very inexpensive you bring your own food it's very inexpensive and you don't have to travel far if you can't factor the flight into that cost then drive somewhere and just get away it's really about removing yourself from that situation and building up new memories because then when you return you have those memories and you have the thoughts of your next trip and for me it works so much better than rehashing my issues every week with a therapist so if you don't have a good therapist or you just want to try something new I suggest it why not if it doesn't work if it doesn't work you can always call your therapist and book another session so what do you think is travel therapy for you too tell me all about it in the comments below or do you have something else that you use as an alternative to therapy nice talking to you today and I will see you on the next video bye